Stand by! Contact! Reloading! Reloading! What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Burn Pit Podcast. I am your host, Scott Benjamin Sieberts. Filmed, edited, produced here in Pittsburgh, PA at Studio Me. Uh, They do a wonderful job. I always plug the studio. Uh, Keith, Peter, Maria, they do a great job. Uh, With that being said, sitting across the table from me today in studio is a law enforcement officer. But before that, he's uh, a guy I've known for a while. Uh, We worked in the bar nightclub scene uh, in the Allegheny County area. Uh, I consider him a friend. He's a good dude and a really good human being. Ryan Dunn. What How are you, sir? On, <laughs> What's up, dude? Good to see you, man. How are things going? Thank you for being here. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, so, flow of the show, uh, we allow the guests to introduce themselves to the listening, viewing audience, and say whatever you like about yourself. Uh, and, and then I'll say how I kind of know, which I've already touched on, but I'd like to say a couple more things. And then I'll just get into some like Q&A stuff. Got it. Well, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks to the studio. This place is awesome. You know, I'd, It is nice, huh? Uh, yeah. It is so, cool. Yeah, uh, <laughs> not much of a tech guy, so I don't have any idea what's going on in here. But it, they're doing yeah. a good job so far. I've been oh, liking yeah. what you've been putting out. Um, for sure. But yeah, I've been in law enforcement for about ten years now. But before that, oh, was wow. service industry forever. Yeah, I left Mario's in twenty fourteen. Dang, so I'm creeping up. Time flies here. Yeah, man. Holy shit. Huh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, before that, just service industry since. 16 subway i was a sandwich artiste and then <laughs> went on to home depot and detailing cars delivering pizzas and then you were guys you guys were the next the next, next slot yeah. yeah um yeah i've just been working the last 10 years in law enforcement just a really crazy time for us the last couple of years and sure. uh just navigating it's been a plus and minus relationship but you know, overall, I have been very blessed with that career choice. Good. You know, married kids? Yeah. Uh, not married. Okay. Not married. No kids. But um, getting there. It's right. it's been four years with the same girl. I've been hearing it from her parents. And <laughs> know, so she, eventually. <laughs> sure. You know? Right. Yeah. You get to that point where it's like, uh, you should have get off the pot here, right? Yeah. It's that type uh, of thing. The verbatim what I've been hearing <laughs> for the last two years. You right. Know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So bad. Well, so uh, you touched on it there. We, we, you know, I've, I always considered you, uh, just a, a coworker back in the day. Uh, you always carried yourself really well and we had a good rapport together mm-hmm. and we still do to this day. Yeah. And, and one of the things I enjoy about our relationship and our back and forth is, uh, we have a similar sense of humor when it comes to some dark humor things and we'll keep that yeah. private between you and yeah. I, but I, what I like about, I, I think, and I think it comes along with certain careers and jobs when you deal with high pressure, high stress environments that can be, you know, or can leave a scar on you sometimes where you take a a situation and you can make light of it and add some levity to it. And I think it takes the power away from it when you're able to just laugh at something. And we have that dark sense of humor that kind of, I think is a coping mechanism uh, a little bit. Absolutely. (laughs) There's a, there's a reason why, Nurses, soldiers, yeah. paramedics, law firefighters, law enforcement. That's, got, there's a reason. We got a sick, like sick sense yeah. of humor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but we have a really good rapport uh, yeah. with each other here. Uh, as a, an officer in the Allegheny County area, uh, we're not going to be specific to any department or anything like that. But mm-hmm. I was recently, I think it was like two years ago, I was in a car accident, uh, like uh, in in the Allegheny County area, and I'm a calm guy. I don't get to. You know, I got this, I got T-boned real quick. I got T-boned uh, in this area and I got out. I made sure everyone was okay. And I'm just waiting. And you were the first officer on the scene. Mm-hmm. And it was like, as as calm as I get, that was an even more calming effect that you had yeah, on me. You know, just, I, I saw you were shook. I got the, the, <laughs> the Kleenex out for you. <laughs> Scooped you up. I was and crying. I, I, you put I your arm you around me. While, put a blanket yeah. around me. No, you were great. You were great. Uh, but uh, we have a good rapport, and I'm, I'm uh, really grateful that you came in today because you're going to give me in the listening and viewing audience some insight into uh, the, your career, your job in law enforcement. Uh, you know, with that being said, I'm going to ask you the same thing that I asked uh, Dominic Izzo, mm-hmm. which is why law enforcement? 
what drew you to that profession? What made you want to become a police officer? Beyond the uh, cliche of wanting to help people, it was, um, you know, I knew people in law enforcement prior to me graduating college or even going to college. Where'd you um, go to college? I went to Slippery Rock, a class of 2013. Good one. Yeah. yeah good. It is a good school. It was a, I had a great time there. Yeah. Great time there. Uh, but the, the, the big part of it was I didn't want to be stuck behind a desk. And uh, my dad's an Irish entertainer. I don't know if he knew that or not. Phenomenal, so yeah. I grew up around meeting people constantly. And uh, just the idea of working in a... Like a typical nine a, to five. A cubicle sitting across from someone that you don't like for eight hours a day, seven days or five days a week. And uh, just not seeing the sunshine. Like that was my biggest... Uh, the antithesis of going to police work. And uh, I knew that there were a lot of things, there were a lot of pros and a lot of cons to it, but um, I didn't really fully understand it until I was in it. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of really cool things that the general public don't get to see. And I've also seen a lot of bad things, but I'm sure. Um, the people that you go through it with, that's what kind of made everything bearable. You built some camaraderie there with the, Absolutely. the guys, the girl with you mm -hmm. in uniform. Uh, now, typically you have to go through an academy, right? Yeah. Um, what's a length of an academy like? So I've been through two. two. Um, one was a state academy and the other one or a county academy okay and the other one was for the department that i uh eventually went to so i've been with gotcha. three different departments and okay. the third one had uh an abbreviated course for me because i was already state certified uh so the first academy that i went through uh i believe it was six months on the dot um okay. but now with new um there's new case laws there's new uh, amendments to laws uh, new policies being enacted, new okay. methods of policing. So they'll extend the academy out to however they feel is necessary to make you the best officer that you can be when you get out there. Gotcha. So uh, it, now, that's a recent amendment to s some of these things. Is that post so, some of the issues that have been going on, yeah, like the high profile case that we'll get to, we'll get mm -hmm. to eventually. Is that because of that? It could be like uh, mental health awareness. Um, okay. like 20 years ago, that might not have been as much of a, a prevalent topic at the Academy. Right. But now that it's more and more prevalent as time goes by, you know, narcotics, um, domestic abuse, we're being trained to recognize that a little bit beyond the level of what it was a, a while ago. And every situation is different. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. And the Academy is not going to teach you everything. Sure. Law enforcement is one of those things where, you know, you get taught 10%, like vehicle code and crimes code, but 90% to 99% of what you know, what you learn is is on the job. Gotcha. Like you have no idea how you're going to react to a, a, one of those oh crap scenarios until you're really in one and no scenario at the academy it's is going to trial by fire. Yeah. That, that, that inherent level of danger is just not going to be there at the academy. You know sure. I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so before I, I get into some questions, that, cause I, I want to touch on some of those situations that you're talking about there, because uh, recently you see headlines in the news where it's like, well, maybe they send social workers out to certain mm -hmm. situations where there's mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And I want to get your opinion on that. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think about that? But, <clears throat> Give me a typical, let's say you, you go through um, an academy and then I'm sure you have some sort of uh, on-the-job training where y you have maybe a an officer that is a veteran of whatever department you're in and you train with that person. And then you get assigned to a certain day shift, night shift. What, you know, Give me typically what your schedule would be in a, a department. So depending on the size of the department and depending on how your, uh, your bargaining unit goes, um, some departments run four 10 hour shifts with three four days tens. off. Okay. Some departments run five, eight hour shifts and some departments are running twelves. 
Uh, How many 12s would you do? And so some departments run a Kelly schedule. That's the name of the the guy who came up with it, I guess. Okay. I don't know how Yeah, to what's the Kelly schedule? Uh, so you would work, uh, say, week one, January 1 is a Monday. You would work Monday, Tuesday, be off Wednesday, Thursday, okay. and then work again Friday through Sunday. But the following week, you would only work Wednesday and Thursday. Huh. So you would have five days off that second week. So first week sucks. Second week's okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know any of this. This yeah, is good. Yeah. So uh, the – one of the departments I worked with ran four tens and that was great because you, you, you like that. Yeah. You're, you're working a little bit longer at the beginning and end of your shift, but that third day off at, during your weekend is huge. Now what, what if, uh, let's say on your, on your off days, if you had to deal with, uh, you wrote somebody a ticket or you wrote, whether it was a traffic ticket or whether it's a drunken disorderly or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, if you had to go to court, and it was scheduled for an off day. You still have to show up. Oh yeah. Okay. But yeah, you get paid. Do you get paid for that time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. All if right. you're uh, if your days off are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like yeah. the new guys, yeah. you usually get midweek days off. And they make it that way so the new guys get in the, that situation. The right. new guys are getting getting shafted pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> but that's you're how going. You're going to work seven days a week. Sure. And but that's how it is. Like in really, I mean, especially law enforcement, military. Where you kind of got to earn your keep here, yeah. right? You got yeah. you got a the there's a an acronym. Uh, it's rank has its privileges, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. if you've been there for a while, you, the new guy's gonna eat the shit. Oh yeah, for a while. <laughs> for on, a while, depending right? on if you hire anybody else or not. You know. Okay. All right. All right. So let's moving in on, on your uh, particular experience and career. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have been an officer now, you said, since 2014, mm -hmm. creeping up on a decade mm -hmm. of law enforcement experience. So there was a incident in, in 2020, kind of during the height of COVID, uh, that I'm sure the audience, uh, when you watch or listen to this, you, you immediately know what, what I'm thinking about or what I'm about to say, which is the George Floyd case. Uh, the George Floyd case was an incident where a... Uh, an African-American gentleman tried to pass a fake $20 bill. Uh, he was on some substances. Anyways, it was a big national story. And there were uh, a lot of uh, riots. Uh, Black Lives Matter is an organization that, um, you know, fights against, you know, some, you know, social justice issues and things like that. And, of course, there was riots all over the country during that time. And that mm -hmm. was also in the height of the pandemic mm -hmm. area. Now, you're an officer pre that incident. Mm -hmm. Now there are, there were other incidents prior to that. I mean, there's uh, Freddie Gray, Michael Brown. That was the big one out in uh, Missouri, yeah. but that particular incident really kind of changed things for officers. Cause then you started getting those conversations out there about more training or the slogan defund the police yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So in your experience, your opinion, what you experienced during that time, what was, life like as a police officer pre and post because you still had i'm sure you still dealt with some negative uh you know views of people that had for police officer pre but i'm, I'm sure it got worse post it, it didn't necessarily get worse but i mean we all saw the video it kind of validated a lot of fears for people in in my opinion you know um the Michael Brown thing, you know, the hands up, don't shoot. That was brought up sometimes during work. Um, yeah, in, in terms of George Floyd, there was eight minutes of every, every cop that I knew right from the get-go. We watched the video. That officer had him pinned with a knee on his back, neck, right. whatever you want to, however you want to look at it. Right for the first minute we're like oh i wonder what he was doing before that video came out you know because how we see things now is only 10 seconds at a time sure that's why tiktok so popular instagram reels right the Vine, youtube shorts YouTube all that short. stuff yeah yeah so with policing in particular until the body cam footage is released you're only seeing the 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 overflow of that incident you're not seeing what led to them getting there you're not seeing any of that but for that first minute, that's where my head was. And I know that a lot of the guys that I know 
a lot of cops that I know, they were in that same point. But after that minute, you start thinking, all right, everybody got taught the same thing, positional asphyxia. And that's when your hands are behind your back, you're handcuffed, and you're laying face down. And you could be in the best shape of your life, but it's uncomfortable to breathe, and it creates an unnecessary strain in this particular case on Mr. Floyd. Right. So after that first minute, it's like, all right, turn him on his side. Do something. That's something you recognize something. as an officer and oh, going, hey, immediately. why Why hasn't he moved this position? Immediately. And it didn't look like uh, George Floyd was struggling or, no. or fighting back. No, and then what struck me was one of the other officers, the younger officers that was there, said, hey, I'm worried about um, – something excited delirium i think what he meant to say was positional asphyxia okay but he said excited delirium and then the senior officer on scene said nope we're gonna hold him like this so everybody that i knew said all right beyond a minute flip him on his side if he starts acting up again roll him back over gain compliance and then flip him on his side so he can breathe again okay um you know, in interactions that I've had with people that I've, that I've arrested, right. a lot of people are saying, I can't breathe. And mm-hmm. it was more prevalent after George Floyd. But the people that I work with, we all recognize good and bad police tactics, and we all check each other. That's and good. that's one of the reasons why we've been so successful in my area with the community. We have community resource officers that do a very good job. That's good. At communicating with the public. Like, look, that's not us. Building some relationships there. Yeah. And yeah. the the we had solid relationships. And then George Floyd happened. And then that got dialed back after the riots. That got yeah. dialed back after the media. Like, every police department in a major metropolitan area lost a lot of ground. Yeah, I bet. And we're still in the process of gaining it back in some areas, you know. Sure. But it's, uh, it, it was, it. It didn't necessarily change how we police because we were already sound in our tactics and we communicate effectively with the people in our community. But um, sometimes people just can't be communicated with and bad stuff happens. But sure. Again, right. we check each other. We back That's each good. other up. There's that old uh, quote, you know, you are your brother's keeper. Absolutely. You know, and, and that Absolutely. is good when you you police your own, yeah. you know, when you're like, hey, it, there, there needs to be even a, in a regular job. You know, it's nice to have, you know, it is when my, in my situation as somebody that's a, a supervisor or oversees something, it's nice to know, I have somebody here that's going to make sure the other people are doing what they're supposed to. And yeah. that's one less thing that I have to worry about, yeah. which is great. Um, now, have you seen uh, w- with that and all the high profile cases, and, and there's another recently, and I, I want to get your take on that one too, the one in Tennessee, um, the Tyree Nichols situation with those five officers, but have, have you seen recruitment numbers drop there or, or people wanting to become police officers? You know, the, the desire to do that job now is probably, that probably hasn't, it hasn't gone away, but there's probably some people like, I wanted to be an officer, but now with the stigma on police, maybe I'll try something else. There's a lot of reluctance. There's a lot of reluctance. And, um, you know, the, the old heads, the more the guys are a little bit more shine on their pants. They're, anybody asks them, like, hey, I want to be a police officer. Do you have any advice? And they all say the same thing. Don't do it. Really? Yeah. And mm. it kind of it kind of casts a negative light on it from there. But, um, you know, if it is something that you really want to do, then you're going to do it. You know, and, and there's no amount of talking to you that I can do to talk you out of it. Right. You know, like I had people from – Every part of my family, my friends, you know, don't, don't do that. Don't, yeah. just don't do that, you know? <laughs> Even though this is 2014. Oh, yeah. They're saying that. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, they, I mean, you, you know me, I'm a talker. And they yeah. said, you should do marketing. And I'm like, that's, that's not me. I don't want to be making cold calls to people at dinner time. You'd be, you'd be good at that, know? too. Though. Probably. Probably. <laughs> You're a charming just, guy. You are a charming guy. <laughs> that's good. Uh, but it's it not. is, the numbers are going down. The I'm numbers sure. are going down. And yeah. I, I have a, a subscription to a couple different policing blogs and websites and mm-hmm. you know all these departments are trying new things lowering the standards for the pt sessions I've seen a little the, bit of that yeah it it but let me get your take on this so yeah. you, you hear the uh defund the police um 
slogan that they had. And if and the the Black Lives Matter group got away from that a little bit because mm-hmm. I think people realize, okay, you need a properly funded yeah. all uh, hell's breaking loose, right? right. Yeah, you have to, yeah. right? So. Uh, you you hear some takes go well. We need to put more money into training. We, we need to, you know, maybe get better people in that job. Oh yeah, right. But on the flip side of that, I'm seeing what you're saying, which is well, they're lowering some standards to try and invite people mm-hmm. into that field that may have not met the requirements before. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I know where you're at on this. Which route here would you rather see? I mean, I'll tell you where I'm where I'm looking at. Okay, but. Lowering the standards lowers the standards. You know, like if you want quality policing, you're not going to get it from lower standards. It right. doesn't matter how much training you put into somebody. You know, lowering the physical standards, the physical requirements, it's not going to help. That's not good. You know, because somebody might be who's less in shape might be more likely to use their tools on their belt. Right. As opposed to mentally and physically fighting their way through sure. an altercation. Right. You know, so. And, and we have uh, officers that are, are well-trained mm-hmm. that, you know, let, let's say they, you know, they keep themselves in good condition. Maybe they do some jujitsu. They, mm-hmm. they train stuff like that. They're also more confident walking into situations and, and they're able to be calm mm-hmm. in situations. And that always helps even when you have, say, uh, a citizen that's irate mm-hmm. or, acting out and you're keeping your head cool in those times Mm -hmm. that can really change the climate of a situation and that confidence can come from being in that good condition having those good standards from a physical standpoint like you do you're you're a a well put together in shape guy know what you're doing and and you carry yourself well and that always helps when going into a a a situation like that when you're walking up to answer your question yeah so the everybody wants a tier one operator but they want to work from mcdonald's pay so increasing, right. increasing the funding, uh, can I guarantee a good positive effect? No, because, you know, anybody can pass a mile and a half run, but it's yeah. on the other officers to be like, hey, this dude's a little, we got to figure it out. And that goes back to the field training process that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, gotcha. You know? uh, Izzo had a take where he, he said you should raise the age of – applicants yeah you agree with that absolutely huh. absolutely like i'm seeing a, a department in ohio lowered theirs to 18 you don't agree with that no the not kids, your, the kids. your brain is not fully developed you don't even know who you are at 18 you know yeah that's and good. you haven't hit rock bottom yet hopefully you haven't hit rock bottom yet you haven't hit that mental block where you're like i have no idea what i want to do with my life yeah you know we've been there right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, I agree with that. That's good. that's good. Interesting. That's good. I think that's yeah. a good take too. When, and and uh, having some of those senior guys uh, stay longer maybe would help too. Is what Izzo said. Like so, some of the guys that have had some experience that maybe aren't as salty or disgruntled as yeah. you're saying. Where you ask them, "Hey, should I be an officer?" And they're like, "No, nah, don't do it." Yeah, I'm sure there's some good guys you worked with though that have some you know oh, experience. Oh, 100. Yeah. The way to incentivize them staying longer is just providing better benefits. Okay. Like, gotcha. you know, there's a officer that's working 80 hours a week because his pension is below the poverty line. You know, yep. just trying to put as much money into the into the mattress as he can before he retires. Gotcha. There's no incentive to stay if that is where your future lies. Right. You know? Right. So if you want more experience, more senior officers, you know, just provide incentive. You know, like there, there is none in right. today in, in major metropolitan areas. You know, you want you want a good quality human being behind that badge. Oh, absolutely. You do. Yeah. All right. Let me get your take on the Tyree Nichols thing. People that aren't familiar with that, uh, I I did have a uh, experienced law enforcement guy who's 17 years in uh, a department around the Chicago area uh, come on and and give his take. The Tyree Nichols situation was an incident that happened in Tennessee. It was a traffic stop. It, it went bad. And you can look up the, or you can watch uh, the episode that we did there. Um, it was episode nine of the burn pit. But uh, you had five officers, and they were, it looked like they were just, like it was personal. You know, 
they had gotten this guy out. They were pepper spraying him. They were soccer kicking him, like pride style soccer kicks in the head, things like that. As a law enforcement guy, when you see a video like that, what's what's your initial take? So we were all at the station. There was a, a release time on one of the news yeah, they agencies. announced that they were going to uh, release like the body cam and the yeah. security footage from pole footage yeah. yeah so we all watched the 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 body cam footage together and we were all saying the same thing these guys are all out of shape they all don't know what they're doing they're all they all have at least 50 pounds on the guy you right. know so there is no excuse no excuse to let it go beyond if he's fighting one or two punches if the punches don't work taser if the taser doesn't work oc pepper spray um yeah yeah there's there's no excuse for that okay. right right from the get-go the language they're using when yeah. they're walking up to the car yeah just immediately we're like oh here we go you know as soon as that as soon as they started yelling at them you're like oh here we go do you yeah. normally get together in situations like that with officers and check out uh like uh, in a high profile case across the country like that you're like all right let's let's a couple of us get together let's a- analyze this incident yeah okay. i mean not necessarily when it comes out but if there's a uh, new youtube footage the body cam gets released on a lesser known uh case but yeah we all we all critique we all monday morning quarterback it yeah you know but um that's the only way we're going to learn what not to do you know, it, and it's not like uh, the 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 Tyree Nichols thing. That was right from the get go. We were like, that's not that's not how we do things. That's not how anybody should do things. Right, right off the bat, that's wrong. But um, there was a stress there uh, that Izzo brought up about command staff. Yeah, about your command staff, uh, and uh, I mean, we just touched on that too about hiring and, and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> How much does uh, leadership and command have an effect in, on things in, law, in the law enforcement? It's it's everything. Yeah, it's everything. Like working at a bar, working at at a at a at a hotel, working at a, a marketing agency. You know, good policy, good tactics, good morale, good ethics come from the top down, and that's how I've always measured it. You know, if I don't like my manager, I wonder what he's going through. I wonder what his manager's like. Mm. You know, everybody has a boss. Everyone has a boss. So this is true. It, 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 if you don't like the people above you and you don't think the people above you are doing a good job. Or care. And, you and you, yeah, and if yeah. you don't have confidence in them, um, it can take a huge hit, a huge chunk out of morale. And um, it, the way to get around that is just effective communication nationally you have officers who don't know what their what their goal is they don't know what their mission is what is the mission you know, of uh, law enforcement protect and serve there you it, go. that's the cliche thing like it, it's protect and serve you want to make sure that the community that's feeding your kids is safe right and uh you know, if you don't know what your goals are, if those goals aren't effectively communicated to the rank and file, you're going to have a bunch of officers just doing what they think they should be doing rather than what they know they should be doing. You know, going out, sitting down at uh, at stop signs, you know, just looking for the next car to pull as opposed to designated patrol areas. Like, these are high crime areas. We should hit these harder. Gotcha. Knock on doors, talk to people, make sure they know that we're yeah, in the area. That's part, you yeah. think that's a good uh, part of the thing, knocking on doors and just introducing yourselves to – I think that is good, actually. Not necessarily going door to door, right. but if you see some people sitting out, hanging out out front. Say hi. Don't, you don't even yeah. have to get out of your car. Just, just at the stop sign, just introduce yourself. hit the brakes for a little bit longer than you should. Just ask I, them how their day's going. That's good. Yeah, I like know, that. That's that's all you need to do. It's right. Just to, and then you start building a rapport. Yeah, you the see them every day. Community. You know who they are. You yeah. get to know them. And Way then, at you. Yeah. Hey, how's Timmy doing? You know. Yeah, that's good. That's that's the best way to do it. And then right. they're more prone to talk to you because they know you. They know your yeah. face. It humanizes you. Absolutely. Too, right. They say, all right, it's not just the 
a cop. Yeah. That's a, it's, it's somebody that's a human being too. Right. You know, he's one of the good ones. That's that's, that's what you hear sometimes, you know, he's not, he's no, 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 no. He's one of the good ones. And then they'll talk to you. But, um, okay. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to be going nuts in the community for them to know who you are. Just be a person. That's good. Your car happens to have extra lights on it. Who who cares? Gotcha. Just be a person. All right, I got three more questions for yeah. you. All right. And you kind of touched on it a little bit. Question number one is, as an officer with 10 years experience, if you were given the keys to a said department and said, hey, give me a strategy to clean things up a little bit, give me some bullet points on what you would it would hit. I mean, you touched on that a little bit, reaching out to the community and, and building some relationships there, humanizing you and, and yeah. them. Right. That's a good one. Reach out to the community. Um, you like the age thing? Yeah. Yeah. It, there are some young officers that I started with that are phenomenal. They're okay. very good officers, you know, but 18 is too young. 18 is way too young. Don't lower the age. Gotcha. They're not even out of college yet. Gotcha. You know, yeah. um, what about the training? You said six months for Academy. Do you like that? It's getting lengthened in some situations in some areas. Yes. Okay. But you can absolutely shorten it if you needed to, to make it more, if you were, if you were efficient at the job, if you were efficient at handling the Academy, then it can be as short as long as you want it. As long as your recruits are getting the, the information and knowledge that they need. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, what is the, what the what is the training uh, time where you're on the job training with an officer? Because I've mm-hmm. seen, you know, in the areas that we've worked in, mm-hmm. uh, guys that come out of the academy or, or ladies that come out of the academy and they're riding around with, you know, a veteran officer and being trained. What's the time frame on that training? Usually it's two to four months. Okay. Um, a lot of departments are doing three, uh, one month or a month and a half with a different field trainer, FTO. Okay. Um, some departments go training on six months and then there's a probationary period where you're at will. So if how long is that probation period? Some t- it's, uh, from the beginning of the Academy to when you're cleared field training. So usually it's about a, uh, 18 months total. So like beginning of the Academy to day Z. Okay. Um, yeah, usually, usually 18 months around there. So if you, if you really screw up, you're at will, you can, they can just can you. Gotcha. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's mixed between whatever department you're working for. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the, the big thing that I would do if I had the keys, mm-hmm. I would ask command for goals and objectives and then release that to rank and file and get rank and file feedback. Because some people who wear the stars and bars haven't been on the road for 10, 15 years. You know, I'm not right. saying they don't know what's going on, but sometimes they don't. Okay. And, uh, getting feedback from people who are at the bottom to mid-level to high level. It's the only way you're going to know if your policy that you want to implement is actually going to work. We said that communication. Yeah. You wanna, yeah. Well, you want to have that communication there. Yeah. You so, want people walking around not knowing what they're supposed to do or what the top's thinking. And yeah. 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 The only stuff. way, the only way you're going to know if your policy is worth implementing is if the people that you're trying to get it implemented with actually believe in it. Okay. And if That's they don't good. believe in it, they're not going to do it gotcha. or they're not going to do it well. And then it just, you lose two steps instead of taking a step forward, you know? Right. So the last two, I'll, I'll, I'll say them both right now, but the last two is what advice would you give to uh, a young man or woman that has aspirations of being a, a law enforcement officer and the last one you can think about it if you want to while you're you know giving the advice to the, to the young up-and-coming potential law enforcement officers is uh are, are you satisfied with the choice you made to be a, a police officer i'll answer so, that first yes all right yeah good yeah not a doubt in my mind you love wearing the uniform i've gotten the meat well yeah i that's one of the main reasons I've gotten law enforcement is because they told me what to wear. I have no style. 
Like, <laughs> That's not true because I, I see what you're wearing today. I have David Allen to thank for this. David Allen, we'll give yeah, David Allen a shout out. Plug there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to the advice for the uh, people who are considering a career in law enforcement, if you're going just for policing, if you're going to be a police officer, go to school for anything other than criminology, like marketing, accounting. Uh, I know there are some colleges that offer cyber intelligence, stuff like that. Go for anything other than policing because I've worked with people who their first day quit when they f- saw their first dead body. Really? Yeah. Like uh, the the first one I'm thinking of, spare you the details, the dude died in a bathtub in the summer. Mm. And so person I was working with walked in, saw it, and then a week later they had it in their papers. Really? Yeah, they couldn't do it. And they had a criminal justice degree. And then they had to go back to school and get a business major or something like that. Mm. So, so you're saying, hey, have something else to fall back on here. Yeah. Because you don't necessarily need, because a lot of these departments require a lot, not all, mm-hmm. require a four-year degree. Correct. And now, some will knock yeah. that down to associates like a two-year yeah. thing. But you have to have college credits, right? What are they going to teach you in college that you're not going to learn at the academy? Oh, that's good advice. Yeah. That's so really good advice. Always have something to fall back on. Always have a plan B because, like I said earlier, you don't know how you're going to react in and oh crap situation yeah until you're in it and it could be detrimental to you it could be detrimental to your team like yeah. you could be psychologically nicest. people some people just aren't cut for that yeah you could be the nicest person ever but then once you experience real violent pushback you could go off the rails mm. and it could change your perspective entirely on humanity you know yeah but, you've seen uh, some things yeah 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 but i mean if you had told me 10 years ago that i'd be doing some of the stuff that I've done or in some of the things that I am doing. Yeah. I would have told you you were dead wrong. You're but, out of your mind, Scott. Yeah. yeah but it, it's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's a no brainer. I love what I do. You know, I love the job. I hate the politics. That's the, that's what I stick to. That's good. You know? Yeah. I'm proud of you by the way. Yeah, Cause I've seen, that. I've seen you come along and you really have become a, uh, a good man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. So you too. Thanks, man. No, the, the report we have is really unique, uh, and it's good. The 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 sense of humor thing, but also uh, just what well, I'm in a position where I get to see, you know, people like with you. I, I got to see you just trying to figure out your route that you're going to take, and watching you, you know, grow and become who you are has been, you know. Carrying That's kegs up three flights of stairs really teaches. Really teaches <laughs> You're you a strong act. guy. It's good. <laughs> right, but you do. You you talk about, you know, it's it's good to have a background like that where you've worked in some of these jobs and you know, like, hey, I got a good work ethic here, which you do. And then you're figuring out where you want to go in life and you've, you, you know, that question of are you fulfilled and, and are you glad that you became a law enforcement officer? You didn't even hesitate. There's no hesitation there whatsoever. I love it. And, and you've given me some good advice and insight on the, even the jobs and the stuff I didn't know about, you know, the hours kept and some of the schedule, the Kelly schedule, mm-hmm. you said, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, law enforcement's, it's not easy. No. It's not easy. The, uh, you know, the people's perception of you uh, is, is, it would be a tough one for me. Just because, and I like what you said there about taking the time to reach out to community members, introducing yourself, checking back on them, learning their names, you know, it humanizes you, humanizes them. You start to build a relationship in a community and that's really good. Um, and the advice you give with, with different things was also really good too. Before we wrap things up though, uh, I always, uh, allow the guests, we always allow the guests here to add anything you want to add or say anything you want to say or, you know, uh, I know you don't want to plug any social media stuff, which is understandable. Yeah. Um, but if you'd like to add anything before we go, please do. Yeah. Um, if anybody watching this wants to reach out and has any other questions, or I'd be happy to talk to them. But, um, okay. yeah, you, there's a lot of gives and a lot of takes in this job. And uh, if you're in the right department, you won't have to worry about too much of the taking. And if you're at the right community and the right other officers, you won't have to worry about that at all. The, the, the friends that I've made over the years, you know, the things that we've experienced, 
it's it's a it's you, you, they talk about the FOP, the Fraternal yeah. Order of Police. It, yeah. it is a it is brotherhood. A brotherhood there. Absolutely. It's the most rewarding career that you can have if you're working it and you're doing it the right way. And you're passionate about it too. Yeah. And you talked about leadership too being a big thing. And we've talked mm-hmm. about that on here a couple of times about, you know, the trickle down effect leadership it has and it does affect and communication is a big thing. Yeah. Well, Ryan Dunn, uh handsome fella. You are. <laughs> and and a, a, a great, you're, you're a good dude, man. And I appreciate you taking the time out of your day today to come down and sit down with me. We've been talking about doing this for yeah, a, you know, a little while, and I'm glad we finally had the opportunity to do it. Same. All right, brother. Appreciate you, man. We're out here. Thanks. Thank you for taking the time to watch us. If you like this episode and you'd like to watch another one, click here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.